It is dark. It is lonely. You don't belong in this world. It's not that it's a hostile world, it's just not yours. As you uncover its secrets, the world grows on you. It takes on a feel of familiarity, yet you know that you've only probed the surface. The more you discover, the more you realize how much more there is to discover. Secrets leading to more secrets. You recall the feeling of zooming closer and closer in on a very high resolution photo. As you hone your focus, the world betrays its secrets. This is how Animal Wells' sole developer, Billy Basso, introduced the game in his first of a series of articles on the PlayStation blog back in 2022. Here, Billy finds it best to describe the mood or vibe the game is trying to create, rather than classifying it by a traditional genre, like a puzzle platformer or a metroidvania. And if you've played Animal Well, you probably have a good idea why. While slotting nicely into the pantheon of both of these genres, the game has an even narrower focus and takes inspiration from several specific games like Fez and Tunic, among others. Some have taken to calling these games Metroidbrainias because of their focus on in-depth puzzles that often require out-of-game help, whether that's through notes on a piece of paper or collaborating with other players. Billy built on the foundations of many game inspirations and combined them with experiences from his childhood to form the main design goal of Animal Well, this goal being to capture the feeling of exploring a forgotten or unfamiliar space in an area that you thought you knew intimately. The example he recalls involves a hidden drawer in the kitchen he hadn't noticed after years of living in his childhood house, and how the simple act of discovering that was exciting. But what if the hidden drawer was an entire room? And what if that hidden room had a special reward inside it, or was part of a larger puzzle? It would change your understanding of the space, and make you consider everything you've looked at again through a different perspective. Following this inspiration, and focusing more on secrets and hidden areas instead of difficult puzzles or challenging platforming, really makes Animal Well stand out among its peers. And this is on top of some of the great benefits Billy gained from developing his own engine from scratch that make the gameplay feel as smooth as butter and help to create the game's mystique. He accomplishes these goals by using what I found to be three types of layered concepts. Layers of secrets, layers of art, and layers of mechanics. Since Billy has said that Animal Well's main through line is that the game has a lot of secrets, it's probably best to start there. If you see any marketing before playing the game, you can probably pick up that it has a few tricks up its sleeve, since it doesn't give much away in trailers. Secrets range from new items, to collectibles, to other crazier things that I won't spoil. These are described by Billy as the three layers of Animal Well's design. In his words, the first layer is the basic content you're required to complete to get to the end of the main game. The second layer requires deeper exploration, and some more challenging puzzles you may not have noticed your first time around. The third layer is intended to be a big challenge with lots of puzzles you may not even realize are puzzles. This is where being a solo indie developer helps to simplify the process and create a unique vision, because Billy has to be aware of all these secrets anytime he makes a change because of how integral they are to the game. These layers serve several different types of players to the extent that Billy almost had to design three games superimposed on top of each other. The first layer is for players who like to do some side content, but are really looking to see the main beats and get to the credits. The second is for the traditional completionists who want to hunt down every collectible, while the third is for players who are deeply passionate about the game and enjoy collaborating with other players outside of the game. Animal Well is felt especially tailored to these players as early as the first trailer at a Day of the Devs event back in 2022 that featured an ARG that involved a visionaire cipher, among other riddles. Because they're Animal Well's central gimmick and a must-see feature for many players, it's no wonder Billy spent as much time planning them out as he did. Accounting for every type of every secret in the game, and making sure they serve every type of player that's likely to pick up the game, had to have taken up a significant amount of the game's development time on its own. And even within each of those types of secrets, different players will stumble upon them in many different orders, because of how Animal Well's mechanics are layered in a similar fashion. Like any classic Metroidvania, certain areas of Animal Well can only be accessed when the player has a specific upgrade. How early players can get each of these upgrades is where Animal Well breaks from tradition, though. The toolkit of items presented in the game can be accessed in any order from the jump. This means that players will not only have a variety of abilities over the course of the game, but also get those abilities in different orders. Because of this, secrets layered in each of Animal Well's rooms become more noticeable to players who got their items in different orders than others, allowing players to have distinct experiences. This also means that players will inevitably have to backtrack to find every last secret, as even if they spot one right away, they might not have the right item for the job on their first run through a room. 
Layering in the mechanics of the game in this way is how Billy gets the player to flow to each secret like he sought to achieve. Initially, a player will come to a room with a limited set of tools. If they notice a secret and have the right items, they can access it and then move on through the room. Or they'll notice the secret and not have the ability to access it, so they can mark it on their map to come back later. And even if they don't notice one in the first place, next time they come through with a full kit, it will feel even more exciting when they find something that was right under their noses the first time. On a first run through the main pathway of Animal Well, players will inevitably run into all three scenarios, as the game drip feeds some secrets right away, while storing others for later. This effectively creates the first of several post games where players will need to re-examine all of these familiar spaces with a different lens, much like Billy's story with the drawer in his childhood kitchen. It's also worth noting that Animal Well's structure is pretty different from your typical Metroidvania because of this layering. Since any player could have any combination of items at any given time during the initial playthrough, puzzles involving more than one would complicate the golden path of the game if they were required to progress. Like Billy says, I think designing a Metroidvania is a lot harder than designing, say, a linear platformer where you can load the stages. Just putting the new rooms into the map is the first step, and then it needs to go through probably five or six iterations of just playing through it and trying it. I'll come up with a new item that has implications for the whole map, and I'll have to do a whole pass through everything. As a result, the more complex puzzles that require switching between multiple items appear towards the end of the game, and in the second and third level secret areas that Billy refers to. This way, he knows that any given player will have the tools required to solve them by the point in the game they're required to complete them. And at the center of all this is, of course, the game's slick movement. Anyone who plays platformers knows what bad movement feels like, and anyone who's tried to make one knows how tricky it can be to create good movement. One factor that contributes significantly is input latency, which is basically the time from pressing an input on your keyboard, controller, or phone to seeing something happen on screen. When input latency gets too high, games get that unresponsive feeling that most players refer to as lag, because it feels like the game is lagging behind what they want to do. To bypass this problem, Billy created his own engine. Well, maybe not specifically for this one, but it's a nice bonus at least. Billy explains it like this. Games made with off-the-shelf engines sit on top of the engine layer, which acts as a buffer between the game and the CPU and GPU. With Animal Well, as soon as the player so much as touches the control, the game code can tell the GPU immediately and directly what to do, meaning that the game can render using your input from the same frame without any buffering. This effectively gives Animal Well a very responsive and tactile feel, reducing the frustration players often feel when interacting with platformers that have higher input latency. In this case, less layers, not more, was the solution to get a movement mechanic that feels satisfying. As you probably noticed already, Animal Well has several layers in its art, too. It's been a very iterative process over the years, just creating new parts to the engine, adding new effects and layers, and also trying to just keep everything constrained and looking cohesive. At the pixel art level, Billy aimed for a simple format. I've always found that some of the strongest art really tries to limit its color palette and make the best use of the few colors that it does have, so that was definitely a kind of a strategy early on, when I was just drawing sprites and for the game overall. I use a lot of purples, greens, and blues, and I tend to stick within that palette. And then there's a lot of lighting effects that layer on top of the base art and change the colors as a result. So that tends to kind of tie everything together more as well. So the foreground will be tinted in a certain color, and the background will have its own color. And that sort of changes throughout the game. This approach creates the central color language and motifs of Animal Well that you'll have noticed in every piece of marketing, concept art, and in the game itself, giving the game a distinct, striking look at a base level. Since the key to making any piece of art look good is in the lighting, it's no surprise that Billy made it a central layer of the game's art. Take, for example, that lantern swaying back and forth. It's casting dynamic shadows onto things, so there's a lot of different layers and it all comes together. There's probably four or five different ways that shadows are being cast in the game. He uses multiple techniques to get these kinds of effects in Animal Well's lighting, including 2D normal maps and ray marching. Normal maps are essentially one of the textures of an object, and they specifically display the details of the object's geometry. They're pretty typical, particularly in 3D games, where there is a higher tolerance for lending more processing power to lighting. By using them in this 2D environment, the creatures and objects in the game appear much more lifelike because the light illuminates them differently depending on where it's coming from. And when combined with ray marching, it creates a very unique look. Ray marching is similar to ray tracing, but instead of casting rays to intersect with polygons, you're stepping along a ray, and evaluating sine distance functions, or SDFs. SDFs can represent all sorts of geometry mathematically, and can be blended together to make very dynamic shapes, typically not possible with traditional rendering. These shapes are illuminated by the light sources defined in the layers in front of it. 
and that's not the only artistic feature in the game that's uncommon for an indie. One particularly standout component of Animal Wells art is its fluid simulation. Since pixel platformers are usually built with limited resources for art, complex effects like fluids are usually a secondary concern or left out entirely. This is another advantage of Billy's homemade engine, as he explains, Animal Well has a layer dedicated to constantly running a Navier Stokes fluid simulation. It's used for a wide variety of effects throughout the game, most commonly for water and smoke. The cool factor of the simulation is magnified because of the contrast with the pixel art, because games that utilize one don't usually have the bandwidth or desire for the other. And characters interact smoothly with them too, adding to the immersiveness of the game's environments, like when grass rustles when you walk through it, but in a flashier, more graphically impressive way. Even with a clear initial vision and planning out all of these layers, Billy still left plenty on the cutting room floor. He has said that he designed at least twice as many rooms that are in the game. It's clear that the process for designing Animal Well was very meticulous and precise, which is probably a major reason that it took nearly seven years to develop. For the players who have dove into the well, though, it seems like it was worth the wait. I know I had a great time exploring the game's nooks and crannies and scanning rooms for edges that didn't quite seem like solid walls. The combination of layered secrets, mechanics, and art come together to create a pretty unique adventure and one that I'm sure will inspire other games and be referenced for many years to come. One interview I read said that ultimately Basso hopes players experience full immersion and he hopes to inspire a sense of curiosity and wonder. It's a testament to the layered approach Billy took when creating every component of Animal Well that each one came together to create a game that has provided all three of those feelings to many players.